When creating objects in Corel Draw, you don't have to rely on just your eyes to place things where you want them. With smart drawing tools like guidelines, alignment and positioning options, and live guides, every object can easily go just where it should. We'll look at three dockers that have all the options you'll need for aligning and positioning objects. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial. First, let's look at guidelines. I have this template open with eight dashed blue lines. These are guidelines. In my Objects Docker, I can see that these guidelines are on the Master Page layer, where I could turn them off and on with the eye icon. Because blue guidelines are hard to see against this blue background, I can select them all and right-click on the pink swatch to change their color. The Guidelines Docker is one place where I can create guidelines. The ones I already have are listed here, for horizontal and for vertical. I can use this icon to turn them on and off, and here I can set a different line style and color for the guidelines I'm about to create. If I want to place a new horizontal guideline to mark the top of the light blue box, I'll set the drop down to horizontal. I'll enter the Y distance of 0.8 and click Add. It's not where I want it though, so I'll select the guideline, change the Y dimension to 0.855, and click Modify. I could also select this guideline and press Ctrl D to copy it, then move it by dragging or by entering an exact distance. Or I can create a guideline by dragging from the ruler into the document, then modify its placement if needed. For an angled guideline, I'll choose that option from the drop down, specify the angle, add these x and y dimensions, and click Add. I'll make a copy of this guideline, move it a bit, and when I click again on this line, I can rotate it. I'll continue moving and rotating until I have this guideline where I need it. If I want to be sure that my guidelines won't be moved or deleted, I can select them all and lock them. When Snap to Guidelines is enabled, I can reference these guidelines while creating objects. For example, I could use the Pen tool to trace this shape. Next, let's look at the Align and Distribute Docker, where I have all of these placement options in one convenient place. If I want these four groups to line up neatly with one another, I can select them all and click Align Center Vertically or Align Top. To space them evenly, I'll click Distribute Center Horizontally or try Distribute Space Horizontally. Because Outline is enabled, the alignment is relative to the outlines of the groups. And with the Extent of Page option, distribution will be along the entire page. I have several other alignment options, such as Page Edge, Page Center, or I can specify a point. I can enter coordinates or click Specify Point to pick a point directly on the document. With this point set, I can click Align Bottom to bring all groups down to that horizontal level. Finally, let's look at the Live Guides Docker. When Alignment Guides are enabled, I have several alignment options to choose from. For example, if Object Edges is enabled, I can create shapes that align with existing edges. With Intelligent Spacing, I can draw shapes spaced exactly between two shapes. And with Intelligent Dimensioning, I can scale an object and get indicators when a dimension is matched with an existing object. Or I can rotate an object to match the same rotation angle as an existing object. With Dynamic Guides enabled, I can choose the angles I want to be able to snap to. As I move my cursor around, the various angled guidelines appear, and I can even use guideline intersections when placing objects. If I want angles other than the standard ones that appear here, I can create a custom angle. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on aligning and positioning objects. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial.